Hello. So, this is St George's Day, the ostensible National Day of England. And this is where I'm from. And England still has such a richness of stories, still there, that I wanted to celebrate that on this day, or any other day, but why not this one? Now England's stories are still being written by those of us who happen to find ourselves in this accidentally defined bit of nation state here. Um, Some of them are very old, and this, this one might be one of the oldest. So there was a farmer, fairly well-to-do farmer, and he was leading a white horse from Mobberley, where he was from, to the market, Macclesfield Fair. And he was going across Alderley Edge. Alderley Edge is a great hill covered in woods, in Cheshire. I used to live near it and what I remember of it is this silhouette of this grey-black shadow with the sun behind it. And you could see the tops of the trees all across the top of it on a sunny autumn day. But that's where he was going. And as he came past the point called Thieves' Hole, then he was stopped by an old man in a strange, ragged old robe, leaning on a twisted wooden staff. And the old man said to him, It's a very fine horse you have there, this white mare that he was leading. I'll give you a good price for it if you'll sell. The farmer, now he did want to sell the horse, but he knew fine animal that she was. She really was magnificent. That when he got to Macclesfield Fair, then there would be so many people who would pay a really good price for this horse that he wasn't about to sell her now to some old man at the side of the road. So he said, no, no, I'm, I'll carry on. Out of my way. And off he went. But as he went, then the old man said to him, oh, well, very well, you, you can go to Macclesfield Fair, but I think you will want to sell to me by the end of the day. All that day at Macclesfield Fair, then people came and looked at the horse and they agreed she really was a beautiful animal. Fine, strong, muscle, glossy coat. Checked her teeth, all, all looking very fit and healthy. But every single one of them, every single one of them decided that, wow, good as she was, they, they weren't in the mood today, not today. And they went on their way. And it was a very much grumpier and miserable farmer who led the same white horse home at the end of the day. And as evening came, then he was walking again by Thieves' Hole on Alderley Edge. And there again was the same old man in his ragged old robe leaning on his twisted wooden staff. And the old man looked at him and he said, will you sell to me now? And the farmer from Mopoli, well, he was not best pleased. that hadn't been made a fool of, but, well, he wasted a whole day and he had wanted to get a good price for the horse, so some old man, a few pennies would be better than nothing. Fine, okay, he agrees. The old man leads them both off the road, over the edge, they went by Seven Firs and Golden Stone to Stormy Point and Saddle Bowl. And there, the old man stopped by a sheer face of rock, solid rock. But he took his staff and he struck it on the floor and there was a sound like thunder and the mare bucked and the farmer from Mobbley fell to his knees. And there, in the rock face, were iron gates. And the wizard, for that was surely what he was, opened the iron gates and led the farmer inside the edge with the white mare. And he led them down a tunnel. And at the end, they could see a chamber lit by some warm, pale light. And when 
they entered the chamber, there the farmer saw 140 knights in full shining armour with their weapons held on their chests, lying asleep. And in the middle of them all was a great king, a great king amongst all those warriors. And every single one of them, the king and all the knights, had with them, lying at their side, a white horse asleep, all except one. And the wizard said to the farmer, this is the king and these are the warriors who saved Britain, saved England in her darkest, darkest hour. And they drove back our enemies and pushed the darkness away across the sky to the west. And now here they lie, sleeping until the time comes and it will come when they are needed again and then they shall rise once more and they shall drive the darkness back once more and in a battle thrice lost and thrice won on the plain they will once again drive the ills of this country into the sea but now they sleep and we have need of one more white horse to make up their number and the farmer was just dumbfounded and quite willingly let the wizard lead his white mare away to the one warrior who was without a horse. But then the wizard led him into another cavern, off to one side, and there was a sight that was maybe not quite so wondrous, but which touched the farmer's heart very closely. For there in that chamber was mound upon mound upon mound of gold and silver and jewels and the wizard said i told you i would give you a good price take as much as you can carry and the farmer well he didn't need much more encouragement he grabbed handfuls as much as he could and he shoved it into his pockets and down his boots and into his jacket and inside his shirt and weighed down as he was then he found himself being led by the wizard back out through the tunnel again back out and through the iron gates which shung, swung shut with a clang and then the crack of thunder rocked the sky again and the farmer found himself alone outside the sheer rock face and he never saw the wizard again and he never saw hide nor hair of the king and the warriors sleeping beneath the hill. But there are those who say they're still there. And when we really need them, then they'll return. <laughs>